Hey you guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I am showing you our rundown of all the curriculum for my fifth grader. So this year I am homeschooling a 12th, a 10th, and a fifth grader. And so I am going to show you, let's see, where did I put my sheet? Here we go. Um, I'm still not like totally familiar with everything we're using, so I need to refer to my sheet. So what I'm referring to here is my course of study, which I have one for each of my kids. And this you can find included in my forever planner. I will link to that in the description below. And uh, basically this is just a list of the subjects that they're doing and the resources that they're doing. And then I check it off as I get everything ordered. So I make sure I have all of my things ordered and all my ducks in a row. And uh, so this is for my fifth grader. It's funny because if you watch my high school video, you see like I have, you know, all of these different subjects filled in, but for her, I really just have four. And honestly, that's really all you need until they get a little bit older. I mean, I think definitely some math, some, some kind of language arts or English, uh, some history and some science. Like for fifth grade, that is perfect. So that's kind of what I'm showing you guys today. Uh, but I'm going to start out with, I'm going to start out with morning meeting. And so what we do for that, we start all together. And so the majority of this pile that I'm going to show you right here is stuff that we will use as a family. So with my almost 18 year old, my 15 year old, and with my 10 year old, we'll use most of this stuff together. Um, and so let's just dive in. I'm going to show you what we're using for morning meeting uh, in no particular order at all. Um, and I might do another video just with teen morning time ideas. If you just have teens, uh, things that I would, uh, that I kind of pull out a little bit just for my teens. Um, so we might schedule that at a, at a future date, but all of these are pretty much, you know, any age friendly. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is this. This is a Bible challenge trivia. There are little cards. Um, there's 580 trivia questions. My kids love these. I don't know. Sometimes like if I have something sweet in the house, like M&Ms or like even chocolate chips, like I will toss them like a little treat if they get the question right. It's just fun. Uh, and it's a, it's a fun way to start the day too, kind of while they're eating breakfast, just to do some trivia questions. Uh, and they're fun. Like they're really good questions that a lot of times you wouldn't know. Uh, this one is from Brighter Day Press and I don't know if I can get them all out, but here we go. Um, these are like a morning, they're called Morning Moments, Mornings with Jesus. I think she has one based on the book of James as well. I'm really excited for these because last year we used uh, Brighter Day Presses, Whitney's um, morning plans, which I loved. I'm just not great at following someone else's schedule. <laughs> so I think that these will be even better for me because it pulls out a bunch of the stuff that I loved about the morning, uh, um, the morning time book, but just didn't, I'm just not a great person to follow a lesson plan. So I'm just going to show you like one of these cards and it says, um, it gives you a reading to read for the day, which we may or may not use. We're already like kind of always reading through, uh, the Bible. We read through the whole old Testament and now we're moving on to the new Testament, which I believe we are in. Uh, I think we're in acts or Romans. So, you know, we're, we're getting like, we'll finish it this year for sure. Uh, so anyway, there's a, a reading idea from the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then a question that she's pulled from the reading. And then she has a hymn for every, um, for every term and they're printed here, which is really sweet. And I love, and then, um, and then a memory, um, a verse to memorize. Let's see here. That is, so this is, this is what you can be kind of working on throughout the term to memorize together as a family. And then also, then lastly, just something to pray for, like just kind of a prayer prompt. And so we're going to be using these in our morning time this year. This is something that's kind of new for us. Uh, then the other thing that we do in our morning time is we go through catechisms. So this is my favorite one, truth and grace. So we work on a few questions of these uh, out of here a week. So that's another one for morning meeting. Um, and then a couple books that I will be reading with my fifth grader. We've been working through this book for a long time, and actually this might be our second time through it. This is Theology by Marty Makowski, and it's such a great book. 
absolutely love this one. Um, like I said, we've been through it a couple of times. And then I grabbed this because my oldest son did this. I never did it with my middle two, but I thought that my fifth grader would enjoy this. This is, um, these are by Kay Arthur and uh, Jana Arndt. Um, I don't think we've done this specific one, but my my 21 year old, he did a bunch of these when he was younger. And there are just notes to fill in. It talks about how to study the Bible, how to make notes in your Bible to so that you commit things to memory. Um, so all of those are just really, really, really good. So this one is on Genesis one and two. And then the last thing that we try to do in morning meeting, sometimes we wait until later in the day, like around lunchtime is read aloud. And these are just a couple that I'm hoping to do this year. Um, I make a list of what I want us to read for read alouds, but a lot of times we kind of deviate from the list because I'll find something else. And I'm like, that looks good. And we'll do that. Uh, so we always like to do at least, I don't know, two or so uh, missionary stories. So I wanted to read this one about Amy Carmichael. I think we actually read it or uh, started it and then we kind of abandoned it. Yeah, it looks like we're on like chapter three. So we'll finish this one, maybe start it over so we remember. Um, Pilgrim's Progress, I have never read to my kids and I got this pretty copy and I wanted to read that this year. Understood Betsy is one that we had on our list to do last year and uh, never got to, so that carried over. And then Swallows and Amazons, I just think that this book is so charming um, just by uh, um, just paging through it. And so I thought that this would be a really fun one to read. Maybe we'll start with this one in the fall. And then uh, there's also a movie on this that's a really sweet movie. So it would be a good way to end this book. Um, and I have some more too listed in the blog post that kind of goes along with our curriculum picks for the year as well. So that is our morning meeting. Let's jump into the actual. So subject. first I'm going to do um, math and language arts or English. And then um, and then I'm going to go into science and history. We do Saxon math pretty much every year. And one thing is that I do not pay attention to grade levels. We just keep working through. And so that's just one little tip that I have for you guys if you're if you're brand new to homeschooling or if you're been homeschool if you've been homeschooling for a while and you feel kind of stuck on this topic. Grade levels are quite arbitrary when you're looking at just what your child knows. So they're created so that, you know, it's easier for schools to sort the kids, right? And we don't really have to do that. We could just work through one curriculum and then work up to the next level and just keep going. And as long as they're progressing, they're doing fine. And, you know, even if they do kind of plateau a little bit on a certain topic, then that's the beauty of homeschooling because you just stop you hang there until they really master that that um, skill or whatever it is that you're learning at that moment, and then you keep going. So um, definitely don't pay attention to that. So um, that's what she's using for math. And then I'll give you a quick rundown of what she is using for language arts. So she is going to be continuing on with her cursive practice. She did one of these books last year. They're really great, like just basic. This is the style of cursive that I like teaching my kids. Uh, it's just, you know, I think it's Danilian. Um, I don't even know, to be honest, like it doesn't, I, I don't care what it's called. I just like it. Um, and so, and I do want them to know how to write in cursive. Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, I don't care, but I kind of care. So anyway, this is the fifth grade book. And so she'll be using this. Uh, the next one is she's going to be doing spelling. So she's a fifth grader. She's actually never done spelling before. I don't do, I don't do grammar every single year. I don't do phonics every single year. I don't do spelling every single year. So we just kind of, uh, do them progressively based on where they're at again. So we will start with letter recognition when they're little. Then we go into the sounds and the phonetics of sounding words out. And that's like, I don't know, maybe like five, maybe six. Usually I like to teach my kids more on the older end. So, you know, um, my kids really, I would say, didn't know how to read very fluently until like seven, eight, somewhere in there. And that's actually better than trying to shove down a bunch of academics that their brains are just physically not ready for. 
um, before that. So just, just that little tip. And then they can't really do a spelling book until they really know how to read. And so we just focus on the reading part uh, and until they really know how to read well. So we won't do any grammar or any spelling or anything like that until they can really read well. And I use phonics for, for teaching to read. Uh, I like hooked on phonics. That's what I've used with my kids. And then as soon as they learn how to read, then um, we can start doing a little bit of grammar period at the end of the sentence, capital letter at the beginning, just very simple. I like language lessons from um, The Well-Trained Mind, and I also love easy grammar. Depends on what you're looking for in a curriculum, but I definitely recommend both of those. And then I will do in elementary like a year or two of spelling. I don't need to do it every year. I mean, if they can read well, they're probably going to spell well too. And so, um, we are doing a year of spelling and we are using Spelling Workout. It's just a very basic book, but I enjoy it. It has a list, um, a list for the week. Let's see if I can find one to show you. It has a list for the week and then it has just activities for them to do throughout the week. And then they can do a spelling test on Friday. So that is what she's gonna use for that. We're gonna do a little bit of writing. I'm not gonna do a ton of this, but this is a really good way to teach your kids how to write well. This is paragraph writing for kids from uh, Common Sense Press. I have a review for this on my blog, so you can check that out. But it talks about descriptive writing, narrative writing, persuasive writing, expository writing, and comparative writing. And so it just teaches it in a very simple, gentle way so that you know, it's not 40,000 steps. It doesn't take them all day. I mean, it's like 20 minutes of, for a lesson, maybe a little bit longer if they want to get really creative with it. But this is, we're going to work on this maybe once a week or so. Uh, and then the last thing for language arts is this uh, book right here, First Language Lessons from the Well-Trained Mind. This is level four. This one teaches them how to sentence diagram. So I actually really like sentence diagramming. I know it has like a bad rap, but I, I actually think it really helps them to know parts of speech when they uh, can put it into diagrams like that. So it's a very um, simple, straightforward, kind of open and go book. And you don't really have to prepare a lot because this is the teacher's book right here. And it has really like a script for you to read every day. And then this is the uh, workbook for the kids. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like inside you kind of walk them through what they're doing on each of these um, days, you know? So you'll have, you'll tell them what they're doing. They can't really do this on their own. So that's something to keep in mind. If you don't wanna do it with them, then this probably isn't the book for you, but I do think that it's a good idea um, that they have some instruction. So that's what they're, that's what she's doing for math and for language arts. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna show you guys for my fifth grader is what she's using for science and what she's using for history. So one thing that I don't have anything to show you is nature study. So we do a lot of nature study, just a lot of nature walks, journaling. Uh, and one thing that we love is no sweat nature study lessons. It, they are twice a month and you can, you can log in and um, watch live or you can come back and watch the video later when you have time. There's an extensive video library that you can go in and do, I mean, turtles, a million different animals, um, landforms, oceans, ponds, weather. There are so many lessons in there and they're just really, really fun and engaging that they can watch the video and then um, Miss Cindy walks them through a journal entry. So then at the end of the year, they'll have this beautiful nature journal. Um, but then there's also just a lot of really good, um, you know, information that you could just download, print out, and take on your nature walks with you if you don't want to do the full video part. And if you just want to walk them through it on your own, you can do that. And there's book suggestions and all of that. So that's one thing that we're doing for nature, which also counts as science in my opinion. And then what we're doing kind of for our official science is we're doing um, Apologias Exploring Creation with Zoology 3. This is the land animals one. We did the one, um, I don't remember if it's one or two with the birds, with the flying creatures. And that was so much fun. We did that, I think three years ago or something like that. I did that with my two daughters together. It was so much fun. Um, and so I'm excited to do this with, um, my fifth grader on her own. 
Apologia is updating these books, but they haven't updated this one quite yet. And at the time we're recording this, I think all of their stuff is 25% off. So check out the link in the description and see if you can catch that sale if you're seeing this video right when it comes out. Um, so this is, uh, this is what we'll be doing. And then I also got the journal. I definitely think that these are a must have when you're doing the Apologia courses because they're just filled with, um, activities and nature or journaling pages. It's just a great notebook to have at the end of the year. Um, you know, and it has all of the, you can do, you're kind of doing like lap books, pieces and things like that as well. So I definitely recommend uh, getting the journal um, when you copy work, um, when you're doing these courses, definitely get the journal as well. So that's what we're doing for history or sorry, for science. And here's what we're using for history. So we're doing ancient times uh, in our whole family this year. And uh, even though we're not technically doing uh, the courses together, there'll be a lot of crossover because, you know, over the dinner table, we'll be talking about things. Um, we'll probably watch some documentaries together, probably some movies together and things like that. And so uh, this is what my youngest with my fifth, fifth grader, what we'll be doing. We're going to be using this as our kind of our spine. So for ancient Egypt, we're going to use this. I really like these history pockets. Um, they're not, you know, super, super deep, but they really like do a good job of covering a lot of the different aspects of this, you know, for example, ancient history. Um, and so <clears throat> we're going to use this for ancient history. And then um, we're going to use for ancient Greece and ancient Rome, we're going to be using the homeschool in the woods pass. I can't remember what they're called, like passport something. Uh, but they are incredible unit studies. So we're going to be doing two of those for one for Greece, one for Rome. And uh, each of those, by the end, you have this really big, beautiful lap book and all kinds of fun projects and things like that. So we're going to start with the ancient Egypt, with so the history pockets and then homeschool in the woods for Rome and Greece. And then um, we're also going to be, I'm going to be pulling some projects out of this. This I got way back in like 2008 when we started homeschooling and there's a bunch of recipes in here, game ideas, all kinds of fun stuff. It says for ages 12 or five to 12, I would say that's probably about true. Um, there, yeah, there's games, there's project ideas, recipes, uh, costume ideas, all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll be pulling stuff out of here. I have a ton of books on Greek myths, so we'll be probably spending a little bit of time on Greek myths because that's always fun. And then I do want to read through these. I love these Genevieve Foster books. And I have this one on Augustus Caesar. And uh, these are really great because um, it's called Augustus Caesar's World. And that's a really good description of these books. So she has one on Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Um, oh, gosh, I'm looking at my shelf here. John Smith. Um what else did I say? Oh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, and so what's cool about these is she she goes throughout the, the whole world. So while you're just focusing on this main character, in this case, Augustus Caesar, you're going through his life, but then you're kind of hopping around the world to see what's going on in other parts of the world as well, which is, it's, it's just a cool way to kind of help your child form that timeline in their mind. And so it's these, these are really really great books i highly recommend these if you if if you're studying something that you can add one of these genevieve foster books to that makes sense definitely recommend it so that is what we are using with my fifth grader if you have a high schooler you can check out my high school video and see what we're using for them and i hope this video is helpful and helps you make some of your decisions too and your planning and so uh, if you have any comments or questions leave those below if you like this video hit subscribe so you can see whenever a new video comes out and thank you so much for tuning in we will see you soon